Set against the backdrop of 1950s Otaheite, Trinidad, Elizabeth Nunez's historical novel, Bruised Hibiscus delves into the intricate impacts of colonialism on gender dynamics and Caribbean society. Through the lenses of two marginalized women, the narrative unveils the harsh realities of their lives. Rosa, hailing from a lineage of plantation owners, detests her Trinidadian schoolteacher husband for subjecting her to physical abuse and verbal degradation, yearning for liberation. Meanwhile, Zuela, burdened with ten children and a volatile Chinese spouse addicted to opium, suffers under the weight of domestic violence. Once inseparable childhood companions, Rosa and Zuela now find themselves estranged, grappling with the shattered promises of enduring friendship amidst their shared struggles. However, one day, they saw a man brutally raping a young girl. They couldn't do anything to help her, and the experience traumatized them both. They never spoke about it, and the incident eventually drove them apart. Now, they cannot be friends, because they don't want to admit to each other how their respective lives have turned out. One day, in 1954, everything changes in Otaheite. Fishermen stumble across a white British woman's body in an old coconut bag. Though it is unclear how she died, most people think her husband murdered her because violence against women is common. However, since this is a colonial area, some people assume that a Trinidadian killed her. Racial and community tensions reach new heights. Both Suela and Rosa reflect on what the murder means. They hate living in a society where men think they can treat women this way. Rosa hopes that her husband dies so she doesn't have to worry anymore. Zuela wants her husband to quit opium and to treat her properly. Most importantly, Zuela wants to protect her children from physical and emotional abuse, but she does not know how to escape her loveless relationship. Rosa and Zuela meet up again after the murder. Forced to confront the harsh reality of their unhappy marriages, Rosa and Zuela find themselves trapped in bleak circumstances. Rosa's relationship began with love, but quickly descended into a nightmare of obsession, paranoia, and jealousy as her husband's violent tendencies emerged. Subjected to physical abuse as a means of asserting dominance, Rosa's spirit withers under his tyrannical rule. Zuela's plight is equally harrowing, having been ensnared by a Chinese opium trader at the tender age of 12, shortly after her friendship with Rosa dissolved. Held captive by this man turned spouse, Zuela's sense of agency is stripped away, leaving her vulnerable and adrift. Despite Rosa's guilt-ridden conscience, Zuela resolutely attributes their suffering to the oppressive power dynamics entrenched within Trinidadian society, absolving them of culpability. Upon reuniting with Zuela, Rosa is confronted with a distressing revelation, her husband is afflicted with stomach cancer, a potentially terminal diagnosis. Rather than relief, Rosa is consumed by guilt for harboring thoughts of his demise. Seeking solace and guidance, she confides in a compassionate local nurse, who, prioritizing Rosa's safety, implores her to consider leaving her husband if he survives. Grappling with conflicting emotions, Rosa reluctantly acknowledges the nurse's wisdom and vows to explore this possibility. Meanwhile, Zuela's domestic situation deteriorates further as her husband's opium addiction spirals out of control, fueling incessant abuse and neglect towards her and their children. Disturbed by his unsettling fixation on their eldest daughter, Zuela resolves to vigilantly monitor the situation, determined to protect her family at any cost. As Rosa tends to her ailing husband, she contemplates the nurse's counsel and ultimately resolves to heed her advice, recognizing the imperative of prioritizing her own well-being. She plans to leave her husband at the first opportunity. When she tells the nurse about her plans, they conspire to get Rosa out of there safely. In Zuela's household, the worst happens. Zuela finds out that her husband beat and raped her eldest daughter. She knows what she must do. She leaves her husband and takes the children with her. She knows the guilt of what happened to her daughter will haunt her forever. She vows to never expose her children to a man like this again. Meanwhile, Rosa's husband shows sign of recovery. He begs Rosa to stay, he is sorry for how he treated her. Despite the nurse's protests, Rosa stays with her husband. She is too embarrassed to see Zuela again. While Zuela rebuilds her life, Rosa retreats into misery once again. The book received widespread critical praise upon its publication, winning the 2001 American Book Award. An internationally best-selling author from Trinidad, Nunez, received a BA in English from Martin College and an MA in Literature from New York University. In the 1970s, Nunez helped Medgar Evers College develop its writing curriculum. 
She also co-founded the National Black Writers Conference, and she once chaired the PEN American Open Book Committee. I hope you enjoyed this video, leave a like if you did, and be sure to subscribe thank you.